So you start. Uh-huh. Hey there, folks. I'm Alison Jones. And I'm Ciro Continicio. And we're both technical evangelists for Unity. And recently we've completed an internal game jam in preparation for the 2019 Global Game Jam. And we just wanted to share with you some insights on the projects that we've made. We started pretty um, freely. We didn't have a theme like Global Game Jam. Me and Alice, we just uh, came together and we decided we wanted to make a game in 2D. And then we also chose, we wanted to make a game that was heavily story driven, right? Yeah. Uh, that was the challenge that we wanted to tackle. So with these things in mind, we, we started our brainstorming. The initial idea was um, the character would discover uh, that there was much more to the world that he was living in. It was a 2D world, but he would discover that um, there there was a a third third dimension. dimension. Yeah. Yeah. And we kind of started on that path. So everything was 2D, was to be 2D. Uh, Characters were to be kind of like flat, flat style. And then during the course of the game, the character, which we didn't, we didn't know what, what the character was at the beginning, was gonna find this third dimension and and try to explain it to the other character. So that was the story. So with the initial narrative hook that we had, we tried to come up with the character designs first. And we took into Photoshop and started drawing some ideas. Me and Chiro initially wanted to approach a flat style, which we felt would be easier to emulate in the space of the game jam. As we started creating the assets, uh, you the story that sort of evolved, yeah. yeah. Yeah, as I was making the 2D assets, I kind of felt like I wanted to put a little bit of my spin on it as well. And having never worked in in a flat style before, I kind of find, found it hard to approach as well. Added a little bit more detail. And, and then um, some more details. <laughs> <laughs> and then some more details, which we then scrapped. <laughs> uh, I feel like it came together quite nicely in the end, and it was a good mix, uh, compromise between the two. So we sort of had more flat shaded characters, but then we put a bit more detail on the environments and the props. And as we were making the art, um, we also found that the story evolved because uh, as I was designing these characters, uh, it suddenly wasn't coming together as a story about a third dimension anymore. It took a more like a fantasy spin, right? So Svana is a daughter of a Viking Jarl. Just something that I came up with, which was a follow-up to a character that I did before, Rickard the Viking, which we used for our 2D animation blog post. And I thought it would be fun to explore uh, what if he had a daughter and to put her in this universe. So so, so the game evolved into this uh, uh, Viking fantasy narrative. story. Yeah. yeah. And so we, we basically switched everything to this other story and um, eventually the game became just that. Uh, all the idea around a world in 2D and finding the third dimension uh, crumbled <laughs> in some way. Yeah. But that, that's fine, you know, like game jams, uh, it happens all the time. The story evolves. Uh, mm-hmm. And in this case, the story and the gameplay evolved as a result of the asset that, that you were making. Yeah, I think it's an important thing to keep in mind that whenever you start a game jam, uh, by the end of it, you're almost never going to have the idea that you initially had. However, despite our change in narrative, we still had the same systems uh, that we were planning to use in place. So we would still need a dialogue system and an interaction system. So in a way, our initial idea did carry on into the final project in this form. When we chose a 2D game, uh, we made it on purpose. We know all the crazy 2D tools that are being integrated into Unity lately. And so we wanted to put them to the test. We ventured into this game, trying to cram into it as many tech, 2D tech as possible. And that actually worked quite nice. So we always had in mind this idea of using tile map. The game had to be set in a world that was kind of big. We Mm -hmm. wanted this progression in the map. And so the tile map came came natural as a, as a choice because that would allow us to paint like big maps. We felt like we could use the new hex tile maps and it would also be easier for me as an artist because then I could just draw a set of assets that we could reuse rather than coming up with new environments for every scene. I had this idea of uh, mixing types of tile maps and I thought, why don't we make the natural environment with hexagons and uh, human-made structures with, with squares? And it actually worked quite nicely. Uh, so you can have natural uh, areas that have a more organic yeah, profile shapes, yeah. and then for man-made structures like a house it's more blocky which is what you expect from a house or a road mm-hmm. that's built by humans we didn't mention but we're using collisions to decide what's 
workable and what's not, yeah. then it works quite nicely. We don't actually need to add anything to it. We just add the tile map collider to the man-made structures and then those things become unworkable. There was a, a, a victory, if you want, in this experiment. Mm -hmm. So another thing we wanted to do with this game jam was to explore the tools a little bit. With tile map, for example, we decided to use tiles that bleeded on over the grid. So rather than drawing tiles that are exactly like the grid, we expanded them a little bit, which means that each tile is going to bleed onto each other. Actually, this came from the idea of having a flat style, mm -hmm. because if they bleed and they are the same color, then they're just going to merge with each other. We didn't end up using the flat style in the end, but it worked anyway. We basically had grass tiles that had, for example, a bit of a curved edge to them or just different shapes of grass leaves. And then when you put them next to the dirt tiles, it would look like the grass was going a bit over to the dirt tiles, even though they weren't on the same place in the grid. So that was a nice little detail that we added. And then, you know, we used all the tools that the tile map allows mm -hmm. us. So one of them, which is often overlooked, is mm -hmm. the idea of creating your own brushes in some way, not just one cell but kind of like a bigger brush. Mm -hmm. In the tile palette, you can actually place different objects and then make a kind of like a box selection mm -hmm. and use all of that as a tile. And that allows us to paint an entire forest in a matter of seconds because you could create a little bit of variation in the trees and mm -hmm. bushes and rocks. One of the parts of tile map that's frequently overlooked as well are the rule tiles. And the rule tiles allow you to basically define a set of different sprites for the same type of tile but based on how the tiles are positioned next to each other, it changes the sprite. So for example, you could use it for roads to make different corners and change how the road looks based on the rotation. And it looks different based on whether it's leading up or to the side. And that's all just one tile, so we didn't have to create any extra brushes or anything. Yeah, so it eliminates the need to select the correct tile every time. You just paint and the tile does the calculation for you. Mm -hmm. The rule tiles are a scriptable tile, like I said, so they can be found on our additional 2D Tech Demos repo, and we're going to link to it in the description. We used to only have it for rec rectangular tile maps, but now we also have a support for hexagonal and isometric as well. So do check them out. And speaking of tools that are now integrated into Unity, we decided to use the new 2D animation system as well. It's used for bone rigging 2D sprites, which isn't something that Unity has officially supported before. We actually have made several blog posts on the topic recently as well. Mm -hmm. And then being these animations keyframe based, you can blend them together. Something that you couldn't do if you were working with a frame based animation system. So you import the clips and then you can define your transitions in the animator state machine. Mm -hmm. uh, and that makes for a very nice, pleasant animation. And the 2D animation actually recently got an update where we now support, support layered PSD files. So you don't have to space your sprites out any longer. You can just put uh, each element on its individual layer. We use that for the main character, right? Where she has like the yeah. body, which is one sprite, mm -hmm. and then the, the head because it has some kind of... Um, like like a this. <laughs> fur collar. So we didn't want it to move with the body because then the head would like bend weirdly. So I thought that it would be better to attach it to the head and that's how we animated it in the end. And in terms of scripting, uh, the game is pretty simple. The thing I like the most is probably the dialogue system, which is based on uh, scriptable objects. For people who don't know, scriptable objects are a very old concept in Unity, actually. Mm -hmm. A class that you can also save as an object in the project. Each piece of dialogue is a scriptable object and the characters as well. And that means that you have this object that contains the name of the character and every time you have to have a piece of dialogue by them, mm -hmm. you just connect that object. But that also means that later you can change the name of that character uh, and that will be propagated to all of the dialogues. It's cool because in the last few minutes you can then uh, start producing content and that's what you did, right? When you finish yeah. the story uh, and you start adding lines and lines yeah. and lines. I then... Um made the individual dialogues for the characters when we had a bit more of an idea of what we wanted the narrative to be. We used GitHub to collaborate on uh, the same scenes. So as you know, Unity scenes are actually stored in text files, so you can actually merge them together. We broke the scene into different prefabs, mm -hmm. and that actually allowed us to work on the same scene and integrate changes from me and her. In one instance, we even touched the scene, both of us, and then we merged the changes and it worked. As long as you touch different objects, Unity scenes can merge with Git. So that's good news. They can merge with Git, they can merge with um, Collaborate as well. Yeah. Uh, but we chose Git because we were pretty expert with it. So that was a natural yeah. choice for us. We resorted to 
asset store tools, right? We didn't use much, but we chose one, which I always use in every project of mine, I have to say, which is the uh, DoTwin. It's a library of um, twins. Uh, it's a very flexible one. It's a very lightweight one, very performant, uh, super easy to use, and it's also free. Uh, and we used it for um, uh, basically transitioning the UI in and mm -hmm. out of screen. Um, the asset store actually has a, has a pro version, which has some advanced functionality. Um, but yeah, really recommended uh, Do Twin from uh, Demi Giant. Um, you will find the link in the description as well. We learned a lot about the 2D pipeline, the resolution yeah. that we had to choose. We had a long time deciding or sort of what resolution of our assets should be, especially because we had the tile bleed as well. So we had to test a few different things and we also had to consider yeah. how big the things were going to be on the screen so we don't overdo it. We learned to place our pivots. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so we, Early in the process. because it's 2D, we needed to have different depth sorting. So instead of sorting by the z-axis, we sorted by y. So based on the height, sprites would go in front and behind each other. Yeah, and that's for, a setting that is in graphic settings, right? Yeah, in the settings of the project. But yeah. you want to place your pivot accordingly. So for characters, yeah. it will be, for example, at the base, in between the feet. Yeah. You want the pivot to be mm -hmm. where the object or the character is touching the ground. We learned that we you need to edit your pivots uh, straight away because mm -hmm. otherwise then the graphics it leads to will, confusion. Yeah. Yeah, will not match. Uh, this game jam confirmed that things in game jams don't always yeah, go as planned. Never go as planned, yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, it's, it's normal that uh, ideas that you have initially uh, will evolve during the course mm -hmm. of the jam. It's good to discuss with your teammates yeah. because if there's no communication, then mm -hmm. I saw this very often actually that people work in the same team, but they go on different paths. And then yeah. when they join, they have two different projects. They yeah. have two different projects. <laughs> they realize that they were working on something yeah. different. So communication is key. Uh, and on that note, uh, me and Churro are also going to be going to Global Game Jam in Paris, in France. We're going to be going to the Isart Global Game Jam. Isart venue? and Amplitude yeah. Studio. Yeah. Probably not gonna team together again because yeah. it's like... Uh, yeah, we want to help you guys out and see what people are making. So it's actually fun to see what everybody else is working on. So yeah. find us there. If you are going to get Global Game Jam, uh, you can also find other Unity people, other people from the Evangelism team and more. Uh, we're going to Hamar in uh, Norway. We're going to Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to um, London, like all over the place. Um, and of course, outside of Europe as well. Um, if you're not going to join Global Game Jam, you can still take part in the discussion on Unity Connect. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to put the link in the description as well. And on the days of the Global Game Jam, you can watch it streamed online mm -hmm. by the Global Game Jam itself. And if you found this interesting, then also check out the projects that we've made. We're going to put up an HIO link to all of our projects for you guys to check out as well. Yeah. So, Alice and Chiro signing off. See you there. Yeah. Well. Do we um, need to be like, hey there, folks? <laughs> <laughs> folks. <laughs>